Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, in today's first reading, the author of the letter to the Hebrews speaks about the two comings of Jesus. In the first coming, Jesus entered the Holy of Holies, the heavenly sanctuary with his own blood by self-sacrifice on the cross. In the second coming, he comes not to offer his own himself once again, which has already accomplished, but to bring, to bring to salvation all those who eagerly await for him. To gather the elects, the second coming of Christ. To judge the living and the dead. These two comings of Christ is symbolically relived, re-celebrated, represented in every liturgy that you celebrate. In the very high liturgy, before the gospel is being read, or, or before the beginning of the mass itself, the book of the gospel is brought in a procession and placed on the altar. The, the book of the gospel presents the first coming of Christ. And it is from that book of the gospel, the deacon or the priest reads it during the gospel. That is the first coming of Jesus. His ministry of proclamation, his death and his resurrection. The second coming of Christ is relived in the liturgy during the Eucharistic prayer and the communion. When the priest brings the sacred species, the body and blood of Christ, he gives to us, Jesus comes and he consumes our being. That is the second coming of Christ. Therefore, we believe every moment we approach towards this first and the second coming of Christ. In the gospel today, because Jesus was doing a such a profound ministry of unification of human persons, giving dignity to those who were oppressed, who were outcast, like tax collectors and sinners, and those who were in the high position and authority, scribes and Pharisees, and began accusing Jesus, saying this fellow is out of his mind because he does not respect our Sabbath laws, he does not respect our social norms, he does not respect our societal norms of social stratification of the outcast sinners, he eats with them, therefore a he has become mad. Therefore, not only that, they also continue the character assassination of Jesus, now saying that he does all this, like uh, giving sight to the blind or, uh, or chasing the devil with the help of the devil. Therefore, knowing that all these things, giving sight to the blind or uh, raising the dead is the work of the Messiah, knowing, having read the Old Testament, now in order to refute Jesus because he came from Nazareth, he is a son of a carpenter, son of Mary, now in order to refute that point, they begin to say another accusation, blasphemy, saying that this fellow is possessed by devil. With the help of the devil, he does all these things. And this is a serious allegation. Negating the very presence of Jesus, is now they are throwing him out of the realm of their theology, that he can no longer claim as a messiah, that he can no longer say that I am the fulfillment of the scriptures, because now they are telling that this fellow is possessed by a devil, and he comes from the devil and with the help of the devil he does this. They wanted to wipe out the very identity of Jesus as Christus, as the Messiah, as the anointed. It is a serious allegation, character assassination that they wanted to do to Jesus. At this point, Jesus summons them. He calls them. Had Jesus left this just to go ahead as he was, they were going gossiping about Jesus. It would have been a serious repercussion on the ministry of Jesus. Therefore, he calls them. He calls them because the, the Torah was at stake, the prophetical sayings was at stake. In hatred for Jesus, they were even negating the Messiah whom the God has sent. Therefore, Jesus summons them and he enters into dialogue. If I cast out devil out of the help of the devil, your own exhaustus, with whose help do they cast out? In those days, there were also a sect of the people who used to cast out the devil and they did it with the, uh, with the incantation from the Torah, from the prophet. And they knew that this was with the help of the God they were doing. So therefore, Jesus asked, if I am doing with the help of the devil, with whose help your own exorcists are doing it. But know that if I am doing with the finger of God, the kingdom of God is among you. Therefore, in this word finger of God, Jesus tells them that his works are the fulfillment of the Torah because it was believed 
it was the finger of God which wrote the commandment and Torah and gave it to Moses. Therefore, when Jesus says that the finger of God, it also refers to the entire scripture. If I am doing it as foretold, as foretold by the scriptures, know that the kingdom of God is among you. Know that I am the Messiah. Therefore, finally, Jesus closes this chapter telling, all the sins against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But if anybody blasphemies the Holy Spirit, he will not be forgiven. Because many were of the opinion that Jesus was born of this Mary out of illegal relationship. Mary was uh, made pregnant even before the marriage with Joseph. Therefore, there were also many rumors going around that Jesus was an illegal son, is born out of illicit relationship or perhaps being the abuse, Mary was the abuse victim of Roman soldiers, so on and so forth. Therefore, summoning up all these accusations, Jesus tells, all the sins against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but sin against the Holy Spirit. Because it was the Holy Spirit who spoke the prophecy. It was the Holy Spirit, uh, through the finger of the Holy Spirit, who through the Messiah, who through the Moses and the prophet, the Lord gave his words. And it is the Holy Spirit who has spoken to the prophets. And if, the, if according to in that line of the Holy Spirit, if I am born and if I am doing this thing, and if you accuse me of the evil spirit, then this sin of yours will not be forgiven. Here we see the very crux of the heart of Jesus. Even He did even pray for His own persecutors from the cross. Jesus even forgave those who crucified Him. But those who doubted His very being, His very origin, His very mission, that not being rooted in the law and the Torah, but like any other human origin, Jesus says, this work of the Holy Spirit, if you doubt, then you will not be forgiven. My dear friends, to do any good, it is not in human power. All that is in human power, one can, in order to do good, one has to make an effort. But to do evil, no need of being an effort. To be a bright student, it makes it, it takes a lot of sacrifice to study, to do homework, to follow the lessons and not uh, wasting time. Therefore, to be a good student takes a lot of effort. Whereas to be a lazy, easy, easy go like a student, it does not. You just need not to do anything automatically. St. Augustine reflecting upon this would say, what is not increased, decreases. Therefore, to do good, a person requires the Holy Spirit. If somebody is doing good, you must appreciate him. If you don't appreciate him, at least we must stop character assassination about that person. Because Jesus himself says, a good tree cannot bear bad fruits, nor does a bad tree can bear good fruit. You shall know them by their fruits. Therefore, if somebody is doing good, it is to the help of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, if we want, we can appreciate that person, encourage that person, help that person in doing the good. But in no way, we should do the character assassination of that person, saying he is doing so because so and so, because of so and so reason, spoiling the good name of the person. Let us then examine ourselves and see, do I belong to those group of people who do good, who extend being good, good deeds to others? Or do I belong to those group of persons who speak ill about the other, spread, spread rumors about the other person, spoil the good name of the other person, therefore hindering the spread of the light, spread of God's kingdom of fellowship, peace and justice. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to enlighten us so that we may be the bearers of light and love. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.